welcome everybody over on YouTube and of course here in Twitch chat. Looks like everybody's ready to go for the last color of our Ravnica Allegiance constructed set review. We still do have multicolor after this, which will be the longest of the uh, six sections. Um, but we got green first. So what we're doing here is we are going through and grading each and every card um, on an A through F scale where we're talking about standard. So some cards may, may be better for limited, some cards may be better for other formats, but we're talking about standard here with our constructed set review here. So a little reminder of the grading scale. Um, and also if you're watching this on YouTube, of course, you can check down below in the info panel for the grading scale also. Um, and if you're watching here on Twitch, uh, well, I don't have a, a great link to that actually right now. So actually, never mind. Forget that. <laughs> My bad. Next, uh, let's go through the grading scale though. Um, if uh, we have A through F, an A is a format all star among multiple archetypes. So the examples I have here are Jade Light Ranger, Lava Coil, Adanto Vanguard, Ravenous Chupacabra, and Search for Ascanta. Uh, there are cards that are better than A's, A pluses. That'd be like Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, or <clears throat> Niv Mizzet, or History Banalia. Uh, B's are format staples among multiple archetypes, including sideboard cards, or maybe a defining card in a single highly played archetype. So, cards that examples I have of that are like Merfolk Branchwalker, Lightning Strike, Takatli Honor Guard, Duress, Sinister Sabotage, cards like that. Um, for C's are cards that will see a regular amount of play in the format, or maybe an important card in a single highly played archetype. So cards that are C's that I have are like Druid of the Cowl, Shock, Dauntless Bodyguard, Plague Crafter, Radical Idea. Then D's are cards that will see a very slight amount of play in the format or has a fringe archetype built around it. Car maybe sideboard cards like Crushing Canopy, Invoke the Divine, or slight pl slightly played cards like Gutter Sniper, Lookout's Dispersal or fringe archetype cards like Lich's Mastery or uh, Haphazard Bombardment. And then Fs are cards you'll see no play in the format. They're cards that are made for limited. Uh, they are cards like uh, Old Growth Dryads, Alpine Moon, Johnny's Last Stand. These are like some some rares that are like that. Or uh, cards like Axebane Beast that are just made for limited. These cards are Fs. So there we go. Let's go ahead and get started. Our first card is Axebane Beast. Oh, wait, I already just spoiled this one. Whoops. Yep. Three and a green for a three, four. That's an F. Up next, we have the Mythic. So we're already at the Mythic immediately for green. How do you grade Landwar Elves? That's a good question. Landwar Elves is an A, I would say. That's that's an A. Um, Biogenic Ooze. All right. Three green, green for a two, two. When Biogenic Ooze enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 Green Ooze creature token. So right away, you have a 2-2 and you're, you're, make, you're creating another 2-2 immediately when it enters. And then at the beginning of your end step, so if you can survive that long, you put a 1-1 counter on each Ooze you control. So not only will this turn into a 3-3, your other Ooze creature token will turn into a 3-3 as well. And unlike... Oh, I'll continue on. And one last ability it has one GGG, create a 2-2 two, two green ooze creature token. This is a good card. So if we think about, um, what's the five mana sapling card right now? If we think about that card um, that's similar, where it costs five mana, Tender Shoot Dryad. Thank you. I, I was just thinking of the two, or the T for Tender Shoot Dryad, and so in my mind I was thinking of Thrashing Brontodon for some reason. I'm like, it's obviously not Thrashing Brontodon, but yeah, Tender Shoot Dryad. Um, if you think about uh, Tender Shoot Dryad, it makes one ones at the beginning of like the next upkeep, but it needs to stick around to make those saprolings bigger. Biogenic Ooze doesn't need to stick around because at your end step, you put a 1-1 one -one counter on that Ooze, so it turns into a 3-3. Three -three. So if, if you play Biogenic Ooze, um, while your opponent's tapped out, at your end step, you'll have two three threes. They untap, they kill your Pyogenic Ooze. You still have a 3-3. Three, three. So that's that's pretty good. And then it also has this ability to be able to create more Ooze creature tokens. Uh, people are talking about it's really good, like as people are talking about here in the chat, with Quasi-Duplicate. Um, 
the red enchantment, a mirror march that we were saying earlier, a great card to mirror march. Um, and uh, ooze tribal doesn't exist. It exists with with this ability. You can make you can make this, but yeah, you don't get to continually making more creatures. You do continually grow. Um, you continually put one one counters on on your end step. You only make one extra token besides that. Another card this is good with is uh, Wilderness Reclamation. You get to untap all your lands each turn. Then you can have extra mana, and you need something to do with that extra mana. Well, you can put it into Biogenic Ooze. That's something to deal with there. Also, this is a good card if you are if you can make the new Birthing Pod creature work, where you want to you know sacrifice a four drop into this thing to make another token and then sacrifice this into a six drop. This is like another good good thing on the curve like we kind of talked about earlier that makes another body like that. Um, you can find this card with Militia Bugler. You know, it has it's a 2-2, two, two, so you can find it with Bugler and, and play it right, right away. Um, and uh, yeah, even if they kill it instantly, yeah, you still get a 2-2. Two, two. Um, and you know, usually they kill it at like end step, you get like a 3-3 three, three still. Can you stack triggers to untap your lands first and then spend the token to get the one? Yeah, to get yes, you can. So you can you can stack the trigger to untap your lands and then make a two two and then the one one counter happens after that. Yep, you can certainly stack your triggers for that. Um, a Johnny cannot bring it back because a Johnny brings CMC two two power things. But yeah, so there's there's actually a lot of a lot of good things with this. Uh, you know, with this card. Um, I think I'm going to give this card, it is very expensive. So I'm just like, those are lots of like fun things to build around with the card. And I, I'm certainly, this is, this is one of the cards that I'm excited to play in the format. You know, like this is certainly a card that I, I would like to play. Um, yeah, oh yeah, you can arcane adaptation and make all your creatures oozes. You could do that. Uh, I don't know if there's any other decent oozes in standard. I, I don't know any off the top of my head. Um, but I don't even know if, if left unchecked, it steals the game. But even even if it it's checked right away, it still leaves another body behind. You know, like it's it's still making another token. You know, it's like we know how good Siege Game Commander is making other tokens. This is you know similar to that. Even if it's left left uh, unchecked or if it's not left unchecked. So honestly, I'm gonna give this I'm gonna give this a B plus. I'm gonna give this card a B plus. I think this is. Um, or maybe just a B. Yeah, probably a B. All right, we're gonna give it a B. Um, but I could see this being a, a format card in multiple archetypes playing Biogenic Ooze. Um, yeah, I'm giving this a B. B is fair. This plus Helm of the Host, absolutely. So yeah, B. I, and a card that I am ready to play. I'm looking forward to that one. All right, next card, Biogenic Upgrade, 4GG, Sorcery, distribute three 1-1 one -one counters among one, two, or three target creatures, then double the number of 1-1 one -one counters on each of those creatures. That's an F. End Raise Forerunners. This is a rare 5GGG for a 7-7 seven, seven Vigilant Trample Haste. When End Raise Forerunners enters the battlefield, other creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2, and gain Vigilance and trample until end of turn. This is a bomb. Yeah, the other card was a bomb in, in limited. This is a bomb. Yeah, it costs so five GGG, so that's eight mana. So you know we're spending eight mana, but if we get up to eight mana with wh however we're doing it, this thing ends games. This, like, plus two, plus two, and vigilance, and trample. The vigilance, whatever, because the game's over. The trample, though. Um, yeah, this thing ends game. So what are we really doing? Like, how are we ramping into this? We have, we have like a few new ways to ramp into cards. Uh, specifically incubation druid is one that kind of comes to mind. Getting the one, one counter on this incubation druid, adding three mana, um, to your mana pool. That's certainly something that kind of, kind of, uh, come to mind right now um but uh yeah so you, you don't need to cast it um yeah because it's just an enter the battlefield effect 
so you could pod into it eventually. Yeah. Um, I'm running this right into Settler Wreckage. Yeah, you could see this going in like a Golgari type deck that like wants to win like a Golgari mirror kind of thing and just make their creatures huge and like a, a, a board stall kind of thing. March of the Multitudes and then this. That's definitely ridiculous for sure. Uh, but the power of this level... The power level of this card is undeniable if you get it into play. The hard part is getting it into play. You know, eight mana card can be countered um, kind of thing. It's, it, yeah, that's the that's the hard part. Eight's a lot of mana. The power level is an A+. Plus. The mana cost and, like, the actual chance of getting this into play is, like, an F. So where do those kind of kind of meet, you know? Um, who knows? You can do, yeah, you can do Eldritch Reborn shenanigans. You can do, you can put this in some kind of reanimate deck with Eldritch Reborn, uh, Yawgmoth's Vile Offering. Uh, I don't know, you flip a Nickel Bowl, let's put this into play. I don't know, you can do some, some other things like that. Um, I think I'm going to put this, I don't think this is an A because of how easy it is to counter and everything like that. And it, and uh, it, it does take a lot of setup. So I'm thinking this is more like a B. I'm going to give this card a B also. Growing Rights of Itlamok. That's pretty interesting. You flip a, flip a Growing Rights into the Cradle of Itlamok. I think this is a B. Love, love the like art. Love the card. Love the the flavor text. Smash the city to pieces. That's that's awesome. Great card. All right, up next, Enrage Saratok. Two green green for a four four. Can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Well, that's good because it's an F. Gatebreaker Ram. <laughs> the boars make it an A plus plus. Whew! Just ate some pizza. Nice. Uh, two and a G for a two-two gatebreaker ram gets plus one plus one for each gate you control as long as you control two or more gates. Gatebreaker ram has vigilance and trample. That's an F, but it's a sheep. So it is a sheep. Is that like the only? I don't really remember seeing sheep on creature type too much. Because I guess sheep sheep aren't very scary. You don't think that's an F? Build around this, and you, maybe that's maybe all right. Maybe D minus in your in your gate in your sheep gate deck. All right, all right. We'll give it a D D minus. Yeah, that's you want. Yeah, you can play around that. Okay, that that's fine. All right, Gift of Strength, uh, one in a green instant. Target creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains reach until end of turn. So Giant Growth costs an extra mana, but then also gives your creatures reach until end of turn. Um, are, like, are, like, any green decks going to play this card because they can't deal with the flyer? And instead of playing something like Pierce the Sky that's the same mana cost that just deals three damage to a flyer, they want this thing? Don't think so. I think this is an F. All right. Gates are real. Okay, fine. Gate, Gatebreaker Ram, we're, we're, we'll go ahead and go with the D then. We'll go ahead and go with the D. But yeah, Gift of Strength, definitely an F. Yeah, good good for limited. Yeah, good for limited. This next card is one that I'm I'm pretty excited about here. Growth Chamber Guardian. So this is... Uh, one and a green for a 2-2. Two, two. And it has two and a green for adapt two. And whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put onto Growth Chamber Guardian, you may search your library for a card named Growth Chamber Guardian, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. And it is an elf elf crab warrior. That is that is uh yep, that's a thing. And uh so it's, it's kind of like the new Squadron Hawk, right? You don't get the creatures right away. You don't just automatically get them. But also it's just, it's a, you know, it's a bigger body than like Squadron Hawk. And it's only, it's whenever you put the counters on, on the uh, Growth Chamber Guardian in any form or fashion, not necessarily by just adapting. So 
this so like if you if you want to play a green white deck with a Johnny adversary of tyrants, um, a Johnny's tick up will put a counter on your growth chamber guardian and you can go find another one. Um, a Johnny's tick down can go put the growth chamber guardian back into play because you know it's a two drop. Um, you can uh, you can find this with militia bugler. It's a two two power creature. So you know you can have like a, a militia bugler deck, you know that's green white with a Johnny. I, you know, and uh, you can give it riot with like different things also. Um, yep, that Hadana's climb works really well with it too. A lot of ways to use this card. Um, I I think this is a perfect B to kind of kind of go along like the Merfolk Branchwalker type. Um, maybe even a B plus. I I could see this just being played in a lot of different archetypes. They replace themselves. Everything actually B plus. We're gonna go B plus um, with this. Uh, yeah, or exploring with Path of Discovery, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, this this card works in a lot of different ways there. Uh, yeah, it's a great way to rebuild the board after a sweeper for sure. Now remember, you only get one card each time you put a counter on it. So like, you don't get to just go put three in your hand like you could with Squadron Hawk, remember. So you're going to have to like put counters on it and then play another one and put counters on that or put counters on the same one. Like you can... You can Play like Growth Chamber Guardian, go to combat, Hadana's Climb gets a counter, you know, put the thing. Or like, all right, so you have a Johnny and Hadana's Climb already in play. You play the Growth Chamber Guardian, a Johnny tick up, go get another one. Hadana's Climb puts a counter, go get another one. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, and it and it can get bigger for sure, you know, like with the 4-4 and uh, with adapting and everything. So, and it is an elf. That's true with Marwyn and all the elf things. Like with an elf deck, it is an elf. Uh, so, yeah, it fits right inside the elf deck. So, yeah, B plus. I think it'd be plus. I could see A minus. Could see A minus. Maybe A minus, actually. Yeah, actually, I think I think A minus. A minus. Elf crabs are very common. It is silly with Hadana's climb. That's true. So there we go. That yeah, we're going A minus. That's a that's a good card. I'm I'm really excited to play that card. That's you know my my type of card for sure. Um, value green creatures, two mana green creatures that get you a lot of value. I'm all about that. All right, Gruel Beastmaster, three and a green for a two two with Riot. Whenever Gruel Beastmaster, Gruel Beastmaster attacks, another target creature you control gets plus X plus zero until end turn where X is Gruel Beastmaster's power. So you can play like, so it could be like a four mana two two haste and you attack and you give another creature plus two plus zero. Thinking this is an F. Don't, yep. Yeah, I don't really see this thing doing much. I don't think I don't think you put put that in your standard deck. I'm gonna go F. So I would say if Legion Conquistador isn't played, then Growth Chamber Guardian won't be. Hmm. That's fair. So Legion Conquistador costs an extra mana at the beginning, and also can't be anything but two two. Those things. You know those co that costs two mana at the beginning, and you can potentially just just on their own make and these could just be four fours also. I think the Growth Chamber Guardian's a better card. It also has better like creature stats, everything like that. I think it's better. Uh. Guardian Project, three and a green enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it doesn't have the same name as another creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, draw a card. Singleton? So... Hey, got a new sub. Welcome to the stream, uh, Surveys. We'll go with that. Let's get some hype in. I guess a D. I think you can. I think this could be a card you could build around. Um, 
if you want to play like a legendary deck, for example, like a deck filled with legends where you don't want to have very many of the same kind of card because you're just playing a deck filled with legends. Um, every single card, every single creature you play drawing a card is really nice. Um, so I think you could maybe build around this with a legend deck. I'm going to go D. D minus, something like that. Yeah, you could also just play Path of Discovery. Yeah, Path of Discovery is probably just better anyway. All right, F, F plus. <laughs> D minus, F plus. Um... Uh, let's see. Incubation Druid. One in a green for an O2. This is a rare. It's an elf druid. You can tap, add one mana of any type that a land you control could produce. If the Incubation Druid has a plus one, plus one counter on it, add three mana of that type instead. And it has three GG to adapt three. Why does this card have the tap ability and then has adapt at the bottom? Why does this card have adapt at the bottom? Doesn't all the other ones have like adapt at the top? Hmm. Is that the only card with adapt on the bottom? That's weird. So better than all right, better than Druid of the Cowl? Absolutely. So absolutely better than Druid of the Cowl. 100%. Druid of the Cowl is a C. So we are, we are much better than that. So I guess mana abilities are first, huh? Okay. Um, yeah. This card, when you get a counter on this, adding three mana for a single card is incredibly ridiculous. That is so much mana. And that is so good. Um... This is a really good card. And I think this is um, going to be, like, I think this is this is better than a B. Um, this is another card that works really good with a Johnny that puts a counter on it. Hadana's Climb puts a counter on it kind of thing. You can get counters on this. Uh, this certainly works perfectly in an elf deck trying to get lots of mana. Um, yeah, I'm kind of thinking maybe A. Like, all right, so Land of War Elves is an A. I don't... Is this, like, Llanowar Elf? Good. Uh, all right, question is, will there be a recap where we go over the playable cards? No, I'm not I'm not planning on a, a, a recap like that. Um, no. Yeah, Llanowar Elves is an A. So... This is very close to Llanowar Elves. You get to add so much mana. And also, you can add different colors of mana here. You know, you're playing, like, a three-color deck. You know, you get to add you know, your other colors, as long as you have, like, your shock land or tap land of those. Yeah, it's not just green. So you get different colors and a lot of it. This may be an A as well. Sure, it costs one more mana than Land War Elf. You get to do so much. And it can turn... Yeah, then it turns into a 3-5. Um, and not that difficult if you already have a counter on it where you can just have it adapt itself. I'm, I think this is an A as well. I think this is another A. Uh, which we don't have very many A's in the set we've had. I think this is an A. Correct. If one land can produce a, a mana of whatever color, you can do so with the elf. So if you have a land that could potentially tap for five mana, you know, if some clause is met, even if that clause is not met, Incubation Druid would be able to tap for five mana. Yeah, plus New Horizons. New Horizons, three mana enchantment, put a counter on your creature, and then add, that's some ramp right there. Incubation Druid and New Horizons. That's some real ramp. That's some real ramp. Oh, that's true. Right, you cannot adapt if you have any 1-1 counters. It's not... Adapt is... That's a good point. Sorry, sorry. Adapt is not like... I'm thinking adapt is like the uh, monstrosity, where you, you, know, you can have counters on stuff, but you can still monstrosity it. Adapt is not like that. My bad. Once you once you have counters on something, you cannot adapt it. Okay. Yeah. So you so like incubation druid is the card that really helps you get to end race forerunners for sure. So incubate. So druid of the cowl doesn't die to shock and blocks much better. I think that's a big deal. 
not not a big enough deal to play Druid the Cowl over Incubation Druid at all. Everything else Incubation Druid does is miles better than Druid of the Cowl. All right, Mammoth Spider. So Incubation Druid, A. Mammoth Spider, 4 green, 3-5 reach. Awesome card, cool art, love it, never in standard. That's an F. Open the gates. Green, uh, search your library for a basic land or gate card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. I think this is a, I'm going to go with a D with this card. I think if you want to play your gate deck, uh, you want to build around like with your gate deck, this is certainly there. Um, we have Flower Flourish in standard, but Flower Flourish, Flower only gets forests and plains. This can get any basic land. Um, how good the mana mana is going to be, though, with having 10 shock lands and 10 buddy lands, I don't think you're going to really need an open the gates kind of card to get basic lands with how our mana is right now. So, yeah, that's a D. Rampage of the Clans. Three and a green instant. Destroy all artifacts and enchantments. For each permanent destroyed this way, its controller creates a 3 3 green centaur creature token. This is another D. This is certainly a build around card. But this card, you can you can build around this. And you can actually make this pretty good. I don't think this is much of a, a sideboard card too well. But yeah, this is this is the jank card where you want to destroy your own artifacts and enchantments at instant speed on your opponent's end step and make a bunch of three threes and then kill them with that. Um, yeah, so with treasure, yeah, with treasure tokens. So we talked about the tithe card, right? Yeah, light side saying use with tithe. Yeah, you have the white tithe enchantment where you get tons of treasures because people aren't paying too. You can just be getting all these treasures and everything, and then just rampage of the clan, smash all your all your treasures rage just the, all your treasures going to burn and you're going to make a bunch of centaurs um so that's that's a build around thing if you want you know that's that's a deck you can you can uh you can uh make and yeah you could have revel the riches or 1033 so you can basically have revel the riches and rampage of the clans as like two win cons you can have like eight win cons in like a an all treasure deck um does the riot enchantment give tokens riot also? I was thinking maybe the riot enchantment doesn't give tokens riot. I'm not sure if it does, though. But of course, wait, the the riot enchantment will just die because it's just destroy the enchantment. So it'll just die anyway. So it says not token and it's just going to die. So yeah, it'll be destroyed. Anyway, so yeah, that's a, that's a fun card you want to build around, make, make your own deck like that. Um... That's what you can do with Rampage of the Clans. All right, Rampaging Rendhorn. Four and a green for a 4-4 four, four beast with Riot. Cool card. F. I like the art. Cool card, though. Regenesis. I haven't seen this one. Three green green for an instant. Return up to two target permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, so it's it's divination where instant speed where you get to pick which permanent cards you want so like the so selection is really important in those kind of cards um we talked about how like five mana instant speed draw three see people are are pretty low on this card in chat but we talked about how five mana instant speed draw three is really good Five mana instant speed for green, draw two, but you get to pick the specific two really good cards that you want. That's honestly not that bad. Um, now that being said, I think this is, yeah, like maybe a, a D D plus. The power level of standard is really high, and there's lots of really good things to do. But this is this is kind of a card that people will overlook, and it's really not that bad of a card. Um, yeah, instant speed, and you get to choose what you want. You know, you get to bring back two Carnage Tyrants, to, you know, that kind of that kind of thing, or or whatever. You know, it's. I mean, we do have find finality that costs two mana for two creatures, but you get permanence, so you can get, 
you know, enchantments that were destroyed. If your if your experimental frenzy was countered or whatever, you can get planeswalkers. You can get lots of things. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I'm gonna go D plus. That's a card that a lot of people just overlook, though. They'll see five mana to you know the mana cost and number of cards. A lot of people overlook, but that's that could see some that could see some kind of play, or. Or you can put that in a deck and not feel bad about it. Yeah, you can combine it with Mirari Conjecture. There we go. Scrubs, Scrubs talking my language there. With Mirari Conjecture, where you can get back Mirari Conjecture uh, with this. And Mirari Conjecture gets this back. Now that's a Mirari Conjecture card. Root Snare. One in a green. Instant. Prevent all combat damage that will be, that will be dealt this turn. Three people immediately said A for a Fog. F. F. What's lower? Z? Get these fogs out of here. Z. Get Just get out of here. I don't want my combat damage being, pre being prevented. Forget that. Um, <laughs> yeah, this, this card does not exist. Uh, I don't know if Turbo Fog actually needs fogs, honestly. But yeah, this card's already in standard, so whatever. Um, with how like Turbo Fog's getting a lot of upgrades, they may not actually need fogs. Um, we've been seeing like some some people like trying out some some Turbo Fog decks without actual fogs, kind of thing. But we'll see. Uh, that that card, this card. Um, honestly, though, this is a C. You know, like this is just a, a card that's like an important card in a single highly played archetype. That's the definition of a C. So, root snare, root snare is a C right now. Sagatars Volley, two and a green instant, destroy target creature with flying. Sagatars Volley deals one damage to each creature with flying your opponent's control. Real good against mono blue aggro. Um, we already have. Pierce the Sky, which is one in a green to just basically destroy a creature with flying. It deals seven damage to a creature with flying. That's that's destroy for all intents and purposes. Um, this costs one more, but then you get one damage to each creature with flying your opponent's control. I mean, if there was a, a big time Thopter deck, uh, it's good against Afterlife. That's a good part. Yeah, so Thopter or Afterlife, that kind of thing. Um... We'll go with a D minus, not D. Niche cyborg card is a D, so yeah, niche niche cyborg card. D. Saruli caretaker. G for a zero three defender. Tap and tap an untapped creature you control to add one mana of any color. Awesome art. Um. I think this is probably a D as well. I think this is this is would be a good card in the Arcades wall deck that will certainly be a, a niche archetype that people will want to build. I think this this helps that deck out quite a bit. Um, so yeah, D for the Arcades deck. Uh, that's it. Nothing else there. Um, Saruform Hybrid one G two two six mana adapt four. This is so much worse than Thorn Lieutenant. It's an F. Silhana Wayfinder, 1G for a 2-1. When Silhana Wayfinder enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put it on top of your library. Put the rest on the bottom. They don't even go to the graveyard. Is there any reason you would want to play this card? I, I, I'm trying to think of a reason this would not be an F, but I can only see F. So you can set up explore stuff by putting a land on top and then drawing the land with your explore creature. And would you rather just have another explore creature? It's an elf. It doesn't draw. If it drew the card, it would be good, but you just reveal a creature or land and just put it on top of the library. Yeah, we've already seen better two drops for elves 
you know, we've already seen a couple in the set. There's There's been two better two drops for elves just in the set, and there's also Branch Walker. Like, where are you actually fitting this card in? Yeah, if you drew a card, it would be fine. But you just you just look at your top four and put something back on top of your library. F. It does let you set up the red card that doubles the power. There you go. Um, Steeple Creeper. Two and a green for a frog snake. Four, two. Uh, where you play three and a blue to give it flying until end of turn. That is an F. Yeah, frog snake. Uh, Stony Strength. Green for an instant. Put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature you control. Untap that creature. That's an F. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Incubator drew it, I guess. Like, there are a few things that, like, whenever you put the 1-1 one -one counter on it, you know, like, it does a little better. You know, untapping, like, your birthing pod creature could be kind of cool. It's just not worth a card. This, this isn't going to see any play. No, no, no sets are getting rotated out of Arena. No. Uh, Sylvan Brush Strider. Oh, wait, what is, what is this? Oh, that's a bird. I was like, what's, what's going on with this kneecap over here? But that's an, that's another bird in front of the kneecap. Gotcha. Uh, two and a green for three, two ETB gain two life. That's an F. That's, you're not even going to play that against red decks or anything. That's just an F. Territorial boar, one and a green for a two, two, whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, Territorial Boar gets plus one plus one and gains vigilance until end of turn. Another F. I like the art. It's pretty cool art. Titanic Brawl. One green in instant. This spell costs one less to cast if it targets a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. All right, so we have a fight spell at instant speed. Instant speed, uh, fight spell, um, not bad. And especially if you have a 1-1 one -one counter on your creature, it only costs like one mana. And, like that's pretty good. Um, I don't so I don't know if it's C level. C, we have stuff like Shock, Dauntless Bodyguard, cards that see a regular amount of play in the format. I don't think it's that good. Um I think I'll go like C minus. I think if if you want a fight spell in your green deck, this is the best fight spell we'll have in standard. I think. Or maybe I guess D. Yeah, I just see a little bit of play. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, it's definitely D. Maybe D plus. Definitely great and limited. Um, I think it's the best fight spell we have in standard. D D plus. Tower defense. One in a green. Creatures you control get plus zero, plus five, and gain reach until end of turn. This is certainly also a D. This is perfect for the Arcades deck. This is what can make the Arcades deck a real thing. Two mana, give give all your creatures plus five, plus five. Uh, just ends games. You know, like that's, you know, you have a couple unblocked creatures, instant speed, that just ends the game. Plus five, plus five for two. So D, you know, build around kind of thing. You know, that's, that's what makes the Arcades deck a, a deck. All right, Trollbred Guardian, four green for a 5-5. Five five. All right, so five mana for a 5-5. Five five. It has two and a green, adapt two. Each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has trample. More good art. The art in the set is awesome. Cool card. It's still an F. <sighs> this card's an uncommon? This thing's an uncommon? Wilderness Reclamation, three green, enchantment, beginning of your end step, untap all lands you control. That is really powerful. That is very powerful. The lowest this card I'm even considering giving it is an A minus. A plus or S. I don't I don't think there's an S tier. Um I I don't know if this is A plus. 
the thing it this is not a plus this is not a plus the thing about a plus cards they're always amazing think about wilderness reclamation if you just have like a hand of four lands and three wilderness reclamations you're you do nothing or whatever you know like if you're if you're just casting wilderness reclamations and that's all you got you're doing nothing so it's not an a plus but like i said the lowest i'm thinking about giving this is an a minus this is either an a minus or an a this the amount of mana you can get with this is pretty ridiculous um oh yeah you combine it with x spells you combine it with everything uh yeah, you can stack yeah, you stack the triggers and untap them multiple times. Um I would assume unless it's not a trigger, is this just not a trigger or something? I would assume this is a trigger. Yeah, that's got to be a trigger. That would just go on the stack. If it's not a trigger that doesn't it's got to just be a trigger cuz yeah, it's got to be beginning and stuff. That yeah, it's a trigger. Um so a statement here is the bigger problem is that in green there's not a lot of instant speed stuff there actually is a decent amount of instant speed stuff in in green but then also um the mana fixing in this set is you don't really need this in just green all right we're gonna go we're gonna go with a with this card this is gonna just enable like this is like an, an amazing enabler basically this just enables you to do ridiculous things with so much mana um I'm going to A. I'm not going to go A plus simply because the card on its own doesn't just win games. Like my other A pluses are like Teferi, Niv Mizzet. I, I think History of Benalia is an A plus. Um Carnage Tyrant is close, cards like that. I think I think Vivian Reed is an A plus. Uh Willer's Reclamation doesn't just win the game on its own, but it enables. It's May, it will maybe be the best enabler in standard. It just enables you to have such ridiculous turns. So this card's scary. This one's scary. It makes a deadum real, absolutely. Uh, makes all your adapt stuff, all all of your uh, cards that have uh, mana abilities like Shalai, like the ooze from earlier, all that kind of stuff makes it so much better. I think there is a slight chance that this card could get banned. I don't think it's very likely. I think that there is basically no chance that anything in standard will get banned. But two cards that have the slightest of chances would be this card and Teferi. But I think it basically, I think this card has a little bit better chance. I think basically everything's at zero. Teferi is at like less than five or you know and i think or like one percent like yeah teferi's like one percent of getting banned like basically none and this card is at like less than five like two three four five percent of being banned maybe like five percent of being banned so yeah this is this is like a, so i think this that's like what i think I, I basically just don't think things are gonna get banned at all in standard um, but this is like maybe 5%. It's, it's scary. This, yeah, it's scary. So we'll have to see, you know, like it could cert cards like this can make the format or like they can be so degenerate if it, if it does, if it does like really break out, what it does is cards like this basically shut off so many different cards that you can play. You can't play slower decks because, your opponent will just have so much more mana than you. So you kind of have to be like really, really aggressive kind of thing with cards like this. Yeah. Unbared says, uh, uh, 100% sure the wizards tested the card relentlessly. So yeah, we'll see. We, we have heard in the past lots of times where cards have just kind of been changed just slightly right before printing. Um, and we'll, so we'll see with this. Uh, yeah, that card's scary. But uh, still going with A, though. Uh, last card, Wrecking Beast. This is just an F. 5GG for a 6-6 six, six, Riot Trample. That's an F. Yeah. Um, so 
green looking good. I like where green's at. Willis Reclamation, you know, is is certainly a scary card, but there there are some really fun looking cards here. I really like Growth Chamber Guardian. Incubation Druid is is quite scary, also. But that's that's a cool cool card. I, I like my two mana green creatures, so definitely liking those. This thing ends games. Green looking pretty strong. Uh, none of those are even maybe my favorite. Love Biogenic Ooze. So there we go. Yeah, it's it's surprising this isn't legendary. Or anything, yeah. This that's just a scary card. Um, yeah, I think the the game has been really well balanced, basically since Ixalan. I think actually, I think Ixalan really started. I think I liked the st the power level of Ixalan, and I I think that Standard has been really well designed ever since Ixalan. So there we go. That's green. We're almost there. We've gone through the five colors. Uh, so far, we just have multicolored up next. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and come on back for the uh, the last chapter uh, where we have the sixth um, edition video, whatever, of our Ravnica Allegiance set review. This will certainly be the longest one. Not only does multicolor have the most cards, we're going to be going through card number 151 all the way down to... 230 so basically 100 cards because i'm going to be doing multicolor and artifacts so i guess basically going through 100 cards here uh 90 but then also a lot of them are pretty good with multicolor um, a lot of these are pretty good so this will be the longest of the videos but again thanks for watching and um there we go hit the subscribe button and i'll see you next time